Microsoft's been rolling out feature after feature for Excel. Because there's so many, it's easy to miss the good ones. That's why I made this video for you, to show you the best new features in Excel that will make a big difference for you. Let me know in the comments which one you like best. Number one, right-click search to quickly find the command you need. Finding a specific feature in this menu is difficult. Don't worry about this anymore. Instead, what you're going to do is right mouse click and you're going to see a new box pop up here called search the menus. Type in what you're looking for. Let's say you want to add a drop down list. Just start typing in list and you're going to see the validation feature pop up. Use the arrow keys to navigate, press spacebar to select it, and then you can go ahead and add your list. I'm just going to use tab, press the down arrow key to select list, press tab. For source, I'm going to go with division, enter. And now I have my drop down list inserted. Let's say I decide to remove it. This time I'm going to bring up the menu items using my shortcut keys. Use Shift F10. You might need to use Windows Shift F10 depending on your device. Go up and type in clear. I use the arrow keys to navigate and select clear all. You can pretty much find any command using this feature. Let's say I want to add conditional formatting to this. I'm going to go ahead, bring up the menu, press tab and type in conditional formatting. Press the space bar, navigate down, data bars, and go with this one. All the commands are now easily accessible. Number two, navigation pane. Talking about finding stuff easier, what about if you're dealing with large spreadsheets with so many different sheets and lots of content? This is where you're going to need the navigation pane. It's a must use for everyday spreadsheet users. You're going to go to view and go to navigation. On the side here, you're going to get an overview of all of your sheets, including any hidden ones. These are going to be in light gray. If you want to show it, just right mouse click and select show and you've made that sheet visible. You can rename the sheet by right mouse clicking and going to rename or delete if you want to get rid of it. I'm going to go and hide this again. Now, as you probably noticed, if I select a sheet, I immediately jump to that specific sheet. Underneath the sheet name, I get to see the different objects and data that I have. So stack data, that's a data range. This is a chart. This is another data range. And here I have two tables. If I realize, okay, no, I don't want to have table two as a table name. That's a horrible name. I'm going to right mouse click and rename and I can immediately rename it from this window. As you can see, the navigation pane makes it easy to view and manage the content of your larger spreadsheets. Next up, new keyboard shortcuts. There's a shortcut to bring up Power Query. That shortcut is Alt F12. This brings up the Power Query editor window and you can go ahead and view any existing queries or create new queries. Another shortcut is the ability to copy and paste your cells as values. So currently I have formulas behind these. If I want to copy these as values, I can do Control C, go to here, right mouse click, and then go to paste special options or select paste as values from the menu. You can do it with a shortcut soon. That shortcut is control C and then control shift V. This paste your cells as values. Talking about shortcuts, a useful one that will help you stay on top of things at work is to subscribe to this channel. Next up, automate tab in Excel. So you might have noticed that Excel for Desktop has a new tab called Automate. Here you can use Office scripts to create scripts that run on desktop as well as on Excel for the web. For example, I want to create a chart based on this data set. I have a script already created called Chart Script. I'm going to select that, click on Run, and my chart is automatically created. Now I have many videos on how to do this. I'll link them in the description of the video. But just to get you quickly started, you have the ability to record your actions. So for example, let's say you want to create a timesheet that starts from today's date. You can go ahead, record your actions. Everything you do now is being recorded. Let's give our sheet a title called timesheet. I'm going to make it bold. Let's add a bottom border to this. Let's go to view and remove grid lines as well. 
Now here I'm going to use the today function to get today's date. Then let's go and reference today's date and add one to it. Then I'm going to drag this down. So all of my actions are being recorded on the side. I'm going to now select everything, control C, right mouse click and paste everything as special. Go to home, change this to a long date and let's just auto fit ourselves as well. So we, here we have auto fit columns. Then I want start and end. Okay, so every time I would run my script, I want this to happen. So I'm going to stop the script. Let's give it a name. I'll call it timesheet. Good thing is that scripts can be used together with any workbook. So I'm going to open up a blank workbook. Now go to automate. This is my timesheet script. Select it, run, and I have my timesheet starting from today's date. Number five, value preview tooltip. This is great for understanding your formula results. For example, here I have a nested if function and I want to understand why it's returning this result. I can go inside the formula bar, select any bit I'm interested in to see the result of. As I select it, I can see the result of this on top. So I can see this is returning false. I want to see what this bit returns. It's returning medium. I can go inside as well and check out the intermediate results. So here this bit is returning true. Now this is great for when it comes to debugging your larger and more complicated formulas. Next up, use dynamic array results as source data for Power Query. So for example, here I have my filter function. These are the results. I can send this to Power Query as source data. I just have to go to data from table range and this array is automatically sent to Power Query. Now you don't have to use the filter function. You can use any other function that spills and you're going to get from array in your Power Query editor. Now you can go ahead and rename these. So this is basically the same array that I had sent to Power Query before. I've renamed it. I've also added a custom column to it and I've even used it to merge the data from data that's coming from a CSV file to create the result that you see on this sheet right here. This result is based on a CSV data file as well as my dynamic array range. As this range updates, this result is going to update as well. And we can quickly check that out. I'm going to go here. So this is the source data on which the filter function is based on. I'm filtering for everyone that's in the productivity department. Now this range updated, this needs to update and add in these new people that I've added with the status ready to it. So the moment I refresh this, we should see that happen and it happened. So Power Query is now able to accept data from a table, from a named range, and also from dynamic array ranges. Now support for dynamic array functions isn't just restricted to Power Query, it's also coming to charts. So soon the charts that you create, which are based on dynamic array functions like filter or sort, are automatically going to expand, like you see here, or shrink depending on the size of your dynamic array results. I covered this in more detail in a separate video. So these are my favorite new features in Excel. Some of them can really make our life a lot easier. Let me know what you think and which one you see yourself using. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet, and I'm going to catch you in the next video.